Good morning everyone, I'm Boris Huguenel and today in this video I will uh, show you or demonstrate you how you could benefit from a method uh, and it is the method of Charles Barg and Jean-Léon Jérôme. In 1866 they've made lithographies of uh, individual courses uh, on the figure, portrait, etc. that they printed on individual sheets to help all students in R to make progress in their figure painting. Their prints are still studied today in many big schools of R, like in Italy or Spain. Uh, and uh, I believe personally that it is uh, good material to uh, do some exercises uh, which can help you to progress in portraiture. So in this video today I quickly gonna go through uh, a video that I have got uh, on my French Patreon uh, to show you how I would go about uh, to do that exercise and hopefully it will help you. Uh, uh, there is a book, I mean in France we have a book um, where we got only 130 of illustrations so this is what we are going to paint quickly but as you can see there are some sheets where you got the ears, feet, different poses on feet, hands, arms, legs figures, portraits, etc, etc. They have produced a total of uh, 1,971 sheets. Uh, you can find online, um, put a link in the description, uh, you can find their book uh, where most of the, um, I, I don't know how many, but there's at least over 100 of their prints that you could a copy it's a PDF it's a free PDF that you can download uh, and you could uh, use those sheets for your exercises so I'll leave, I'll leave um, a link in the description for you so that's it it's only going to be a short video uh, I hope it will help some of you give you some ideas uh, and uh, let's dive into it I use uh, sheets sheets of canvas uh, they have been uh, double primed and uh, that's what I'm going to use today for this demonstration. So then I put a uh, carbon on top of it to copy uh, my um, picture. So make sure that you tape this well and that the carbon sheet comes uh, out a little bit so you have to make sure it's really well uh, put in place so in case you need to retrace your um, steps and you lift uh, up the sheet the carbon's not falling out etc etc so tape it very well it's a very important step I think this is the most difficult step of the whole painting anyway So now all we are left to do is with the uh, ball pen uh, get the drawing done make sure you get uh, all the shading as well with it in the drawing and basically that's it it's nothing more nothing less than just copying what's what's there if you want to use a different method feel free that's not the only method uh, as long as you got the drawing of this bust uh, and there we are you see you can see it comes through everything's fine and now we're going to skip to the next step so there we have the drawing notice there is a light side and a dark side and this is all about this exercise in the book you're only going to have a dark side and a light side the 
having good shadows always always uh, helps you to paint better portraits so I'm looking for the value and I'm going to go for value 7 here on the dark side so this is raw umber and I made myself a value scale in raw umber as I often paint portraits in raw umber first and then I put the color on top of it, I glaze the color on top of the the under painting so I'm not going to go with white although the sheet is white but uh, I also keep uh, my lightest light for highlights so we're going to go for the second or third uh, uh, light on the, my value scale so 7 will be the shadow and uh, 2 will be the light and then from there uh, we have uh, a form shadow and uh, a second light so we are going to do four values so I start with the overall color in the shadow and then from there I will do my uh, darkest dark uh, which I'm not going to take from this uh, pile I'm starting a fresh pile checking with value scale there I'll do the same again and this time one value darker So and so and so forth. Um, but what I wanted to say is that uh, this method is very very clever, and it's very important, especially for those who are still in their first stages on painting portraits, because it en it enables you to understand the form properly. And uh, once you have done a few of these exercises, and go to the color you will definitely understand the form better of course this will be important to get uh, some volume out of your portraits So we've got the four values done here. Now they are going on the board and I will start with the overall light. So you may ask, well why don't we start with the dark like we should uh, normally? Well for this reason, because it's straightforward, one side dark, one side light, uh, I choose to do my light first because uh, I wanted to avoid to get my hands in. I'll come back to that. Quickly here, see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm marking on top of the sheet my value numbers and then I will uh, get a swatch of painting to put underneath. So in case you would run out, you know exactly what uh, paint or what value to remix this is just an idea because it happens especially for the beginners that they don't mix enough paint they start their paintings and halfway through they are short and uh, they have then trouble to find the right mix again so with this uh, way to proceed you'll be sure to always be able to retrieve your uh, right value. 
you say you could uh, use the, the value scale to do so and yes you could but it's never 100 percent the same so this way you're going to find exactly the same make sure you paint thick it needs to cover it you cannot paint without paint so it needs to cover it don't worry about the strokes if you lose them it's very important to give a bit of um, uh, you know thickness to the paint especially on the light side so coming back so why I'm, why I'm choosing to do this side as you can see I can rest my hand on the right side if I paint the shadow first uh, you can make sure I would have my hands in, in the paint uh, so to avoid that I choose to do my uh, light side first but yes you're right normally we would always start with the darkest darks go from dark to light in oil paint not as important here because we are just following a tracing so it's just uh, filling isn't it so it's not that important I know I don't have some uh, uh, darkers going underneath this so it's it's when you have uh, to layer up that it's important to start with your darks first So now we've done the light side, we are going to do uh, the dark side. And for that again make sure you cover the canvas, there is enough paint. There I'm changing brush. bit faster <clears throat> so you fill in all the spaces with your darks and already here you can see um, the form building this method will uh, uh, teach you how to see the shadows so sometimes in a picture or even on a model the shadow is quite subdued so you have to squint to see the shadow and uh, to distinct the form this way so it is a very important step if you want to make progress and I'm talking to the beginners here but if you want to make progress in uh, figurative painting that's the way to do it do a hundred of these and uh, and once you start with a color it will be just a piece of cake because you would already have understood how uh, the light falls on the form and uh, that's that's the exercise that's really what we need to to find out to study how the light falls on the form Got a shadow side a light side and you got cast shadow, and you got form shadow, and that's all you need. So I kept the eye, as you can see, for later. I skipped over it uh, because I wanted to put some darkest darks in uh, first. 
So I've mixed the darkest dark. Uh, I didn't mix the darkest dark. It's, it's the second dark that we have on the on the, the palette that I'm using here. You basically mirror the other side. So where you see the shadow under the eye on the other side, you put a shadow on that right side, uh, but a little darker. But you basically mirror one side with the other. So but that's what I'm putting in now. That uh, darkest dark in the figure. So take your time when you do this, study it, understand it. I will later have to come back to it to blend a little bit more. But right now, there's no blending going on, it's just light and dark. Moving to the mouth area, you see how quickly um, you get a form in that mouth just with some light and shadows. So now we are going to mix an intermediate color from those two piles and the same on the light side and there will be the form shadow and uh, the cast shadow that we are going to now put on uh, the paint on the subject if you look at um, the PDF if you download it uh, the PDF that I left in description you you will see some subtle changes and this is the form shadow that we are uh, drawing now now the form shadow is everywhere there is a turn you will have a form shadow And you can see here with that close up that as we put that form shadow just next to the next to the dark it gives you a volume and it gives you a 3d look into your paint it's important to leave that stroke don't be tempted to um, stroke it many times don't be tempted to um, soften it too much so just as before you put those um, intermediate colors in to emphasize the form side of the mouth very important this one it's often surrounded by a little light a grayish light intermediate color in the, um, in the hair keep it simple so 
So this is uh, nearly finished. Um, I hope this will give you some ideas. Maybe you want to try to paint a few of those. It really pays dividend. Uh, you will uh, really, really understand. I can't emphasize this enough, but you really will understand the, the form uh, on, a, on a portrait or a figure. So it's really important to start with that. Indoor schools you would paint this for months and months, if not years, before you even start on the colour. But after this, after this stage, um, came really, really good masters out of that, um, of those schools. So now we just do the finishing touches. A little light here, a little dark there. Just a few bits. So that's it. Well, I hope um, this will help you and uh, I'll see you in the next video uh, very soon. I hope anyway. Uh, give me a like if you enjoyed it. And I wish you a uh, very happy painting.